Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I just watched the first episode of the Halo TV show and I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, kind of all over the place right now. There are some things that I think this show did really well and there are some that I think it didn't. So now in this video, I want to give my immediate first impressions. I literally finished watching it like 15 minutes ago. So everything's still really fresh in my head. Later on today, I'm going to have an explainer video out going over what happened in episode one and where I think episode two is going to go. So I will say I'm looking forward to seeing where this story goes. I think it definitely has potential. But uh, let's get into my thoughts of episode one. These will just be all over the place. It's just my thoughts as I wrote them down as I was watching. Oh, and also, by the way, I'm pretty sure I can't show any footage of the episode on the screen or I'll get a copyright claim. So sorry about that. So I'm not going to lie, seeing Madrigal of all places in live action in the show is really, really cool. It's cool visiting like any outer colonies and seeing how different they are to the standard UNSC inner colonies, both technologically and also in terms of the kind of topology of them. And of course, with Madrigal being a hotbed for insurrectionists, we got to see a lot of the kind of inner workings of the innies and how they think about the UNSC and the Spartans and all that propaganda. And I love that element of this show. And it's something that I really hope they go into more detail with later because Honestly, that was probably the strongest point in episode one for me. Seeing the kind of like insurrectionist news channel on TV in the background with, I forgot his name, he played Owen in Torchwood. It's like a any kind of anti-UEG UNSC propaganda news reporter was a really cool touch. I love that element of the world building. And like I said, I really hope they go into more of that later. The way that the insurrectionists built the Spartans up as literal demons as well, just like the Covenant do, but in a very different way. You could see the Innies were almost kind of fearful of them. They didn't even know if they truly exist. They almost seem mythical because of all the propaganda the UNSC push out about them. Now the first fight scene with this industrial facility being invaded by the Covenant and then the Spartans appearing was interesting. It was full of good and bad for me. I'm gonna be honest, the music both in this scene and the episode as a whole was really mediocre. It's not the kind of music that I expect from Halo, especially coming off the back of Infinite where the soundtrack is so good. Going from that to this was just kind of meh. It just didn't do anything for me. There were like two renditions of the Halo theme that I liked. One in the intro and one in a scene later in the episode, which were kind of good. But other than that, not a fan of the music at all. I love the level of violence in this show though. It's something that I've actually wanted to see in Halo for a long time. Like seeing people getting their arms and legs blown off by plasma rifles and further in the fight, seeing people getting literally like evaporated by the plasma is maybe a little bit overkill. It goes further than Halo's standard expanded universe goes with plasma burns, but it's cool to see. The elites, I'm not a fan of. I don't like how they look. They mo look more like Krogan from Mass Effect, especially the armor. I think the actual design of the elites is really good, but the armor is just peculiar. Really, really weird. I also didn't like it how later in the episode there are honor guards behind Mercy, but they look just exactly the same as all the elite miners from the first section, except they have the staff, which again, doesn't have the cool like gold and red on it. It just is like a iron staff or something. But going back to that fight scene, when the Spartans drop in, I love that scene. And seeing how the insurrectionists kind of reacted to them was, again, very on brand. They were genuinely surprised that the Spartans were there. But, so obviously, some of them didn't even believe in the Spartans because they just thought they were propaganda. Others thought they were like literal demons. And seeing the way they all reacted to them showing up was fantastic. And then we get to the actual action of the fight scene. Now, I'll be honest, the Spartans themselves, the armor, like the costume design and everything, the weapon design is absolutely incredible. I genuinely love how Silver the team look and I really hope we get this armor in infinite at some point because my god honestly all four of them chief Kai Vanak and Riz all look so damn good seeing them in combat is so cool but the issue is the CGI in a lot of these fight scenes was not good. A lot of the actual like motion in combat, like there's a scene where Chief jumps over a vehicle and it just looks comical. There's a bit where one of the one of the Spartans is running across the edge of the town. And again, it looks comical. There's a scene where Chief throws his assault rifle on the floor and it literally, I, I can't, it just looks, for a $90 million budget for the overall show, 10 million per episode, I can't believe that elements of it look this bad. I think the choreography of the fight scenes was on point, but the issue is that there, you can tell there are certain parts of the fight scenes where it goes from an actor in a suit to actual CGI, and you can really, really tell that it's CGI and not in a good way. I know it's not quite the same, but all I could think about during this episode was just Halo Landfall and how absolutely incredible that was for Halo live action, especially saying it was 15 years ago that that came out. That did Halo live action perfectly. And I just compare the combat in, in Landfall to this, and this just seems so mediocre, especially considering it's a decade and a half later. 
I really hope the fight scenes later on in the show look better than this because honestly, like I said, the Spartans look absolutely fantastic. The weapon design of everything is fantastic. I really want to see all of this come together and create like a perfect live action Halo battle. But if the CGI is looking like this all the time, it's just gonna, I just won't be able to take it seriously. In terms of the narrative of this scene, I really liked Quanar's dad here, um, but I'll be honest, it was so, so predictable that he was going to die and that he was going to create like the basis of Quanar's kind of story arc for the rest of the show, which it looks like that's going to happen, which I don't know, it makes sense, but I just wish it wasn't as predictable because I could see that coming from a mile off. As soon as the episode started, I realized that, okay, he's going to die and he'll be the catalyst for her to become a stronger character and to build herself up and to be able to stand on her own two feet. I did like the set design of this <laughs> not natural cave. I also like that as well, how I think it was Kai said this cave is not a natural formation. Seeing the stone foreigner facilities come back was very cool. I also loved how in this scene, when this elite runs away, when he pops camo, it actually makes the Halo 1 camo sound, which is a small detail, but I really do appreciate little attention to detail things like that, which is very appreciated. I think Pablo Schreiber does Chief really well. And honestly, I do kind of agree with what everyone's saying that Chief in this just seems like Mando. However, I don't think that's a bad thing because you look back at the genesis of Master Chief's character, Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3, he is very similar to Din in Mandalorian, like man of very few words, speaks only when he needs to, man of action. And I think that they've done that right in this. It just happens to be that that's similar to the Mandalorian, but that's not to say that it's copying the Mandalorian. I don't think there was maybe some inspiration drawn from Mando, but I don't think that's the entire basis of this character. I really like what they've done with Chief so far in this. I personally don't mind Chief taking his helmet off I think that was inevitable, like I've said in videos before. I'm okay with that. Uh, and I think that when he did it in the episode, to convince Quan not to shoot him and to trust that he wasn't trying to kill her, I think that worked really well. I think that was a great plot device. Natasha McElhone as Halsey was a fantastic fit. It's great hearing Halsey with a British accent. I really like that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of Halsey in this show. I also like some of the conversations between Miranda and Jacob Keys as well and how they talk about Halsey. Very similar to the regular canon where they know that Halsey is very single-minded, very focused on work to the point of sacrificing her family. It's very cool to see Jacob and Miranda interacting like that on the silver screen. Moving over to the high charity stuff, we only had one scene on high charity so I'm not going to judge this storyline at all yet. I did think it was quite interesting how Mercy was like talking to Maki, I think her name is, and saying like, you should read some of those human stories to me at some point, because she's reading this like scripture of human stories. It's kind of interesting, but Mercy just seems peculiar in this, really weird. Like, I think the idea is that he's kind of a mentor for Maki, but he knows that Maki is like, I don't know, more intelligent than him or that she's more important, obviously, because she's a human, she's a reclaimer, and just at this scene, they've realized that Chief could interact with that artifact that the Covenant couldn't. So maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe she's going to end up replacing Mercy or something. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Like I said, I don't think you can really judge this storyline at all yet because we had one short scene there, and that's all. Oh, and one other thing as well, the anodyne spirit in the background of High Charity looks so damn good. Really good. But whilst we're on the topic of the kind of middle of the episode, I thought in the middle section, the pacing was really off. Like, it went from like a long period on Madrigal at the start of the episode, and then we jumped to Reach for the first time for a very short scene, and then over to High Charity for an even shorter scene for the first time, and then back to Chief and Quan on the Condor. I thought the opening and the closing of the episode in terms of pacing were really strong, but the middle bit was just all over the place far too fast. I did really like how even throughout the entire episode, there was a clear emphasis put on the relationship between the insurrectionists and the UNSC with Quan and Chief in the Condor. And honestly, this is the kind of human story I want them to tell in this game. Not necessarily a really cliche, deep emotional story where a human finds out that they're a lot stronger than they thought because of a life event that changed them or something, but more so diving into like the insurrectionist propaganda and the UEG propaganda and how the two of them kind of clash. Like I said, we saw elements of that with the new news reporter at the start and I really hope that that's something we get more of because that is a really really interesting kind of story device that I don't think many shows like this use they always go the cliche route of like an inferior human character besides super soldiers ends up getting more powerful than the super soldiers which it just seems cliche to me I hope this is the route they take instead because it's the whole insurrectionist versus UE UEG thing is very halo it's a very halo way of doing that human story and then we get into a plot element that I didn't really expect to see in the show, but 
I'll be honest, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more of it, and that's Chief going rogue. So when Chief and Quan are on the Condor, it turns out that Chief actually killed Quan's mum when she was at an insurrectionist and UEG meeting some years ago. So he is responsible for her mother's death. And as they're talking about that, Chief gets a notification in his herd that he's to follow Article 72, which is to execute Quan. But he chooses to defy that order, unhooking the cameras on the ship and thwarting any attempts the UNSC make to try and shut them down by starving the oxygen on the ship. Now, if we end up getting Chief going rogue, like Halo 5 was trying to set up and like Hunt the Truth tried to set up in the show, and that plot point is actually executed right this time, then it could make for something really good. I just hope they execute it right, because Halo 5 didn't, as we all know, and I don't want to see the show go that route. One really cool detail is when it was looking like Chief was going rogue, I think it was Parangoski said, initiate the full Sauron protocol, which is a really cool detail. If you don't know, Sauron was a Spartan 2 washout who basically went rogue from the UNSC. Uh, long story short, he's going to be in the show at some point. I was actually really hoping that we see Sauron in episode one, but uh, maybe episode two, I guess. But to know that the entire protocol for a Spartan going AWOL is named after Sauron is really cool. Seeing the entire UNSC mobilize against Chief when he's coming in, knowing that he's rogue, even going as far as having a mass driver set up was really cool, and it shows how severe it is if a Spartan goes AWOL. But my favorite part of this plot point was when Silver Team are essentially weaponized against Chief and ordered to stop him at whatever cost, but then Horsey cuts in and he's like, right, no, I'm overwriting those orders. You to protect him from anybody, including humans, if they're to engage him, whatever the cost. That was really cool. And I think it showed the kind of bond that Horsey has with the Spartans, which is something that I feel like this show is going to go into more, especially with the whole plot point of Chief's memories being activated from before he was kidnapped by Oni. I think that Horsey and the Spartans in their relationship is going to be a key driving factor for the whole human humanization of Chief in this story. And yeah, at this point as well, Parangoski being like ultra Oni and stopping the Master Chief at whatever cost and not trusting Halsey and her Spartan project is very on brand, very Parangoski, very good. So overall, like I said, quite mixed. There are definitely some things that I really like. I did not expect to like some of the plot points and narrative elements of this show so much, but like I said, Chief going rogue, Silver Team being weaponized against him, but then Halsey getting control of them. Love that. Really fantastic, and I'm excited to see where that goes. My only issue right now, or my main issue rather, is just the CGI and how bad the fight scenes look. I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed with that, to be honest with you, because I was really hyped for the fight scenes. In the trailers, they look fantastic, but in the show, they just look really amateur. I'm hoping they get better though. Uh, we'll see. I'm looking forward to seeing Soren. Honestly, I feel like Soren and the whole Horsey Silver Team thing are going to end up being the highlights of this show for me. So fingers crossed next week, episode two gives us some Soren because I want to see the rubble. I want to see him and I want to see hopefully a lot of elements of the Cold Protocol brought into the rubble story arc. So like I said, later today, I'm going to have an explainer video going out, breaking down everything that happened in episode one, along with any Easter eggs that might have been in the episode and where I think we're headed next. So make sure you hit that that sub button and stick around for that later on today should be a good one and also don't forget to leave your thoughts down below in the comments on the show what you thought of it anything good anything bad let me hear it down below in the comments and so with that said i'm gonna head off thank you all very much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll catch you all in the next one